You've got multi-channel audio that you want to route to four or more speakers, but there's a problem. How do you do it? My friend Atul, who is a musician based in Norway, recently had a problem with this, so I'm going to give him and you a framework for setting up surround sound in live events so that you can be sure that it will work every time, no matter what venue or space you're in. We'll connect our speakers up and test them. We'll set up our mix buses so that our audio reaches the speakers. And finally, we'll set up our mixer to get sound from a laptop and route it to the correct speakers. Once everything's set up, you'll need EQ to get all the speakers sounding nice. So check out my free guide, Three Steps Perfect EQ. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Let's dive in. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to establish that we know where our speakers are. We're going to have a look at the routing screen here and it'll open up on one of these blocks and we are going to page over using this D-pad down here on the bottom right of the screen. We're going to page over to the output section, right? And where it says analog output one, we're going to make sure that that is set to mix bus one, right? So we're going to scroll using this and then we're going to press the button in to set it. We'll scroll down using this leftmost dial to output two now and then we scroll down to mix bus two and we're going to just continue mix bus three to three four to four, five to five, six to six. And that's gonna be enough for our 4.1 setup, right? So now we know that bus one comes out of output one, bus two out of output two, bus three out of output three, bus four out of output four, and bus five. We know that if we send to bus one, we are sending to speaker one. One last thing that we want to double check is the XLR section of this. So we just page over one page to the left. And we want to make sure that the XLR section is set to output one to four and output five to eight. Now what that means is that the XLRs on the back of this mixer, so just behind the screen here, are now going to be outputting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, these ones here. Now what we need to do is make sure that the correct speakers are connected to those outputs. So we're gonna to run to the back of the mixer. Okay, so now you've got your speakers connected in here, right? We're going to have five speakers. Left, right, surround one, surround two, and then your sub. Now, what if someone has mixed these up, right? The next thing we need to check is we need to make sure that correct sound comes out of each speaker, right? So if these are labeled, great. We just want to make sure that one goes into one, two goes into two, three goes into three, and so on. But if they are not labeled, we're going to use a noise generator to find each speaker. So back to the mixer. There is a button on the side here that says monitor. We're going to press that, right? We're going to use the directional pad down here to page over until it says oscillator at the top. We're going to use this dial here to set it to pink here. And we're going to use this dial at the side to turn the level down. Minus 50 should be enough to here. Minus 40, minus 50, usually enough. And then we're going to select output one, right? We turn the generator on and we should hear sound coming out of speaker one. But let's say we don't have output one. Let's have a look. What we're going to do then is we're going to unplug output one that was the wrong speaker. It's not going to speaker one. And we're going to take the other XLR cables and plug them into output one. Do we have sound in speaker one now coming out of output one? If so, great. We leave this B and we label it one. If we don't, then we'll just take the one out of three and plug it into one until we get pink noise coming out of speaker one when it's connected to output one. We label it and then we let it be. Now we head back to our noise generator and we use this dial and we go over to speaker two. Oh, we need to press assign and then send some noise out of speaker two. And we just do the exact same process. If when we activate number two here, we get sound out of speaker two, then we are happy. If we don't, we go behind the mixer and we adjust the XLRs until we know that speaker two is connected to the correct output on the back of the mixer. And remember, we've done speaker one already, so we don't need to change speaker one. Once we are satisfied that speaker one is coming out of output one, two is out of two, three is out of three, four out of four, and the sub is coming out of five, then we're ready to connect everything up because we know that if we send to bus one, sound will come out of speaker one. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our buses are set up to receive the sound from our channels correctly. We're going to look for this button down here, bus one to eight. If you're working on a larger format console, then you're going to find it in between the fader banks down here. But basically we're looking for bus one to eight and we're going to press that. Then we're going to go down here and we're going to select each bus one by one. We're going to go back up to the screen here and we're going to press the home button, which is on the left hand side on the smaller mixers, on the right hand side on the larger mixers. And we're going to page one over until it says config. 
And then we're going to use the rotary control on the left hand side to scroll down to post fader. And we just click that button in. This will reconfigure the Mixbus pair. We're going to press the right button here to say confirm. And then the first two are set to be post fader. We're going to do that again for channel three and four. So that's three and four being configured. Then five and six, seven and eight, we're not using. The rule is that you want to have your bus sends over here. You want to have them set up to be post fader sends so that when you mix your channels on the left here, then that affects the bus here and you don't need to alter the send, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that these faders are all set to zero and that they are unmuted. Do yourself a favor and you can label them. This is bus one, right? But if you select it, if you hold select and then press utility, which I can't do because I'm holding a camera, you'll get to the naming screen, right? And then you can just use this screen to name the channel speaker one or whatever you want to call it, left or right surround or whatever the name is going to be. What this does is this now means that when we send from the channel to this bus, the audio is going to pass through unaltered to the speakers that we want it to. So that's great. Now we know that we are ready to send audio to our mixer channels. But we need to set those channels up to receive audio from our laptop. We go to the routing screen once more. Now that we are on the routing screen, we want to go over and we want to change our input to not be AAS, to not be local because that's stage boxes or the SLR inputs on the back of the mixer. We want to change it to card. So we scroll down and we're going to turn input channels one to eight. That is the faders on the mixer. We're going to change them to one to eight. 9 to 16 here, we will change to card 9 to 16 and so on and so forth. What that means is that when we send sound from our laptop to the mixer, output one from our laptop is going to come in on channel one in the mixer, output two into channel two and so on and so on. So it's a one-to-one -one relationship, very easy to understand. If we now want to send audio from channel one to our speakers, then all we need to do is select that channel and we go up to the screen here, press home, and we page over five until sense. And then you'll see here, we can use the rotary encoder to select the sense. You see this yellow box moving. And if we turn up this little dial here that says level one, that is us sending this channel to speaker one. Similarly, this is speaker two, this is speaker three, this is speaker four. And then we would page over using this dial and we would use the corresponding dial here to turn up the sub. There's another way of doing it as well. If you wanted to go a little quicker, you can once again, select bus one to eight here, and then you press the sends on fader button. Again, on the larger format consoles, I believe that's in the middle. And then you select speaker one, and you can pick which of these channels should go to speaker one, but you're gonna to want to turn it up to zero. You just turn all the faders up to zero. That means all of the faders are going to speaker one. They're going to speaker one, two, three, four, five is sub. Okay, so what if you're sending stereo tracks and you want to pan them in pairs like front and back, that kind of thing, but you always want them to be linked left and right. Then you head to your buses, right? And you want to link your buses. So speakers one and two are going to be our left and right. We'll link them. So we select, we go up to the menu here, press home, and then down here, this button says link. So we press it, press on the D-pad, and then we've linked the channels. We'll do the exact same for buses three and four, speakers three and four whatever that may be, and we leave our sub channel, our fifth one, it's going to be free. Now we need to link the input channels, right? So let's say it's coming out of output one and two on our laptop. We select channel one, go up to the screen again, exact same procedure, make sure you're on home, press this button on the left, this is link, confirm, and now you have linked the channels. So now these channels here are linked together, but their send is not linked together. So we head up to the screen here and we've still selected the channels. So we still selected channel one. We head to the screen, we're still on the home screen, but we page over five pages to sends. And then you'll see down here, there's a little button that says follow left, right pan. And when we activate that, that just means that however we pan these tracks is going to affect how they come out of the speakers over here, speaker one and two. So if we pan all the way left, it'll come out speaker one. If we pan all the way right, it'll come out speaker two. And so if you have any stereo tracks coming in, 
then you can just link them. And if you have any mono tracks that you want to just send to all the speakers or only some of the speakers, you just leave them unlinked. And then you have the control with the sends up here or with your sends on fader button. So the last thing we need to do is we need to connect our laptop that's playing back our tracks to the mixer. And that's really easy. We just connect using our USB. If you're using a Windows laptop, you'll need to download the driver, DN32 USB driver. You'll find that by Googling it. If you're using a Mac, it'll appear automatically because it's core audio. What we want to do then is just open our playback engine and select the DN32 card as the output device. And then we can select the outputs of our channel. And since we've already set all this up, output one is going to come in on channel one in the mixer, output two will come in on channel two in the mixer, output three in channel three, and so on and so forth. So now you can just set each channel up and then you're good to go. Now when your tracks come in on the mixer, you can use the sends to decide which speakers you send that particular track to. If you need additional help routing on M32 or X32, then I'll leave a video up here. Or if you want to know how to connect up a laptop to those mixers, I'll leave a video just here. If this was useful, subscribe to the channel or leave a comment and let me know what you thought. Until next time, goodbye.